I thought it would be easier, but quite soon after, I like started to understand that no, it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, yeah. I remember actually first year when I quit the biathlon, I moved to Tallinn, had a new job as a personal trainer. Then quite often I was all alone eating the dinner and it was like mm, quite quite lonely times. Yeah, but yeah. now as I'm back a little bit on biathlon, a little bit different perspective, mm. we are seeing a little bit more each more other. Often, yeah. Regina and Kalev Ermits are not the typical biathlon couple. After a lifetime together on tour, Kalev retired from the sport in 2022 and the two had to quickly adapt to a different situation. We've never had this uh, kind of the juniors and, um, and seniors together, so it is. Mm -hmm. You've also, of course, come to some of the races, but not as a coach, you know, yeah. just to. Yeah. yeah, cheer on me. <laughs> but now I try to be with the juniors and... Also with the seniors. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> I like to, not like to miss any moment uh, as mm. a senior races as well. You know, we've both been in the biathlon, so we both know-ish what it takes to be an athlete. And also I kind of know what it takes to be a trainer. So we can respect each other's work. But of course, I think it's... Logistically, it's hard. Harder than it used to be. <laughs> Obviously, when Kalev started considering retiring from the sport, he involved Regina in his decision making. Yeah, I remember it was quite a tough conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was encouraging him to take the decision, whatever it was, but I kind of knew the direction because I saw that he was not 100% happy anymore. But I think for him, he didn't understand it the same way as I did because you cannot see yourself from the side because mm. you always were an athlete. And this was the part I think I was encouraging him, but at the same time I also can understand why he was afraid to take this decision. We Estonia often say it's like an identity crisis. <clears throat> the hardest part was to make this decision. Mm -hmm. Later on actually it went all smoothly because I had uh, some interest about the uh, personal trainer thing and so on. So yeah, the decision making was the hardest part. Later on it was all just going smoothly, like yeah. nice way. Yeah. Despite her partner in life retiring from professional biathlon, Regina was never confronted with the thought of quitting her career too. So I think it was never that, oh, we make this decision together. And this was why I was also encouraging him that it's okay that we, in a way, go separate ways. Because we are individuals and we have to take care of ourselves also. And I knew that if I would finish now, I would not be happy, I would regret it. I would look back at the times and say, like, what if, what if, I would have done this, so now I feel that I have the chance to do it and to really give my maximum, whatever it is. And with Otata being awarded the World Championships in 2027, Regina had another long-term goal in her own biathlon journey. Starting 10, 15 years ago, Estonia was so small, like biathlon-wise, and also inside here, Estonia biathlon was so small and now growing up inside of biathlon and seeing how like Estonia and Otapa and everything is growing also with it and to be able to say that oh I have world championships at, at home soil and I get to hopefully race it's an awesome feeling and I'm really like happy that hopefully I get to experience this. But from the coach side it's also a little bit I feel sometimes extra stressful as well because <laughs> uh, the expectations are so high but I, I, I actually like it, this atmosphere here. Mm, yeah. It's good to be here with the big biathlon. For Regina, the World Championships have already been special in the past season, when she got her best ever results during the two weeks in Novenesto na Moravia, including an historic fourth place with the women relay. I remember I watched it together with uh, Regina's brother and uh, his brother was actually quite optimistic at the beginning, said exactly. The first leg finishing uh, on uh, place three. three. Yeah. Second leg finishing in, uh, lead. in the lead. Third leg in top three and then we are staying in top six and it went just exactly like that. So we were just cheering. And I was surprised <laughs> that my brother was like, you believed in me? Like, because I've had my ups and downs in the first leg and I was like, wow, thank you. <laughs> And 
in Norway Mesta it was one of the first times I felt that oh this is actually like it's not a big deal because this is what I want to do and I hope that I can continue this and I think it's always important to have this trust in yourself and see that oh it is actually working out and yes I can and hopefully I can I can get even better. For now, the focus is on the home edition of the Summer Biathlon World Championships, where, for the first time, Kalev will be at the same venue as Regina, but as a coach. For them, this will be a chance to adapt once more their relationship to the new situation. In a way, you are coaching me. <laughs> yeah. You are helping me Supporting. a lot. Supporting. Supporting me, yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you say it like that. But you are helping me a lot, yeah, like yeah. a lot. And this is the way it works, mm -hmm. I think, really, really well. Yeah, if I can see there is some improvement to, for you to do, yeah. so of course I will say yeah. it out and uh, try my best to yeah. give some helping tips. Yeah, yeah, but I think he's as, uh, like helping me a lot. But as a person, I feel that I cannot mix persons in my life. Like you're either my partner or you're my trainer or you're my father. Like I cannot have these things mixed. If you want a good relationship, <laughs> I need to be only partner. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs>